KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good morning, it's the Workers Beat. I'm Gene Lance, and the number is 972-647-1893. And Bonnie? Yes, uh, this is Bonnie Mathias. Good morning, 972-647-1893. We we have uh, some special stuff today, don't we? Yeah, we're going to, but first we've got to get some announcements done. Yes. Uh, June the 19th. Juneteenth, are you celebrating? You should be celebrating something. And if you're celebrating the end of slavery, you should also think about trying to continue the fight because this, the fight for against slavery or at least wage slavery is certainly not over uh, the uh, job with justice group will be doing something on Juneteenth at 7 o'clock in the evening they're going to meet at the Taco Cabana at the Cockerell Hill uh, exit from Highway 30 oh, yeah. Cockerell Hills is a big strip mall there and Taco Cabana is one of the restaurants in there they serve beer and uh, really the Taco <laughs> Cabana will be where we'll meet at 7 o'clock we're going to do a little Walmart action and then uh, try to stand up for the wage slaves at Walmart. Then we're going to come back to Taco Cabana and celebrate Juneteenth. So come and join us, please. Uh, other stuff coming up. On July the 2nd, there will be an action at 6510 Abrams at 10 o'clock in the morning. 6510 Abrams is the office of Congressman Jeb Henserling. We're going to be standing up against cuts to Social Security. July the 4th, they're going to be standing up for... <laughs> For July the 4th. Uh, the slogan is bring back July the 4th. They're going to go to the Clyde Warren Park uh, in downtown Dallas and uh, and protest the fact that somebody's spying on us all the time and we're supposed to have some decent living conditions and some privacy in the United States that's apparently being taken away from us. We are not going to have to worry in the future about hearing about scandals corruptions and criminality in government we're not goof perry has solved us from that problem oh it's, it's still going to be going on we're still going to oh. have we're still going to have crooked politicians robbing us right and left and uh we're going to have no ethics continuing into uh into state government because goof perry has vetoed the ethics bill Oh yeah, that's right. I he also that. he also yeah. brought about uh, legislation that will t- uh, take away all the money for the people that investigate the crimes and criminalities of his administration. <laughs> we'll show so you. So he's done that. Uh, Goof Perry has fixed it. So even though we're going to continue to have all kinds of criminality in Texas, we're not going to be hearing about it. And we'll have no equal pay either, by God. Okay, and now you may introduce us. All right, we have a special program today, uh, and I'm going. We have an old professor here, who is going to uh, give us a lecture. So sit back, enjoy, and. Here comes, professor, the old prof- here comes the old professor right We are now. here today to discuss the winning of the eight-hour day, American labor's finest hour. I have studied this at great length and will deliver the astonishing facts about what happened in 1886-87. But I only wish that I could convey some of the flavor of what happened, its true import, and the dazzling character of those who led that fight. If only we could talk to those who led the fight, to Lucy and Albert Parsons and the other martyrs. But of course, they're all lamentably gone and silenced forever. Hey, I can tell you all about that. Well, miss, I'm trying to give a lecture. I'm glad to hear that's what you were trying to do. I was afraid you were trying to put these good people to sleep. Now let me tell you what really happened in 1886 and 1887, because I was there. I'm Lucy Parsons. 
You're, you're Lucy Parsons from Chicago in 1886? No, I'm not from Chicago. You ought to know better than that. I'm from here. I'm a Texan. I was born just a few miles from where we're standing in Johnson County, not too far south of Fort Worth. Albert and I only moved to Chicago after the federal troops stopped supervising Texas. But let me back up a little bit before I tell you how we fought for the eight-hour day. I met Albert, the love of my life in Waco, after he got released from the Confederate Army. His brother was in the Texas State Senate, so he came here from Alabama. He was a topographer and was in the Union there in Waco when we married. We were a perfect couple, and it was a perfect time. Well, I imagine that was difficult with you being born into slavery and him a Confederate soldier, and then with all the racism in Texas. You saying I'm black? You better be careful, Mr. Cracker. I'll have you know I'm Spanish, and my maiden name was Lucy Gonzalez. Go back and tell your KKK that. Uh, I'm not in the KKK, and neither are any of these people. No KKK here? Nobody looking to hang me for breaking the miscegenation laws? Okay. I guess there's not any KKK here. Okay, you're right. I'm black. <laughs> so, so a black woman and the racism of Texas. The racism of Texas. The racism of Texas couldn't stand up to our love. And besides, there were federal troops occupying Texas to keep them from going back to slavery. The federal government was trying to curb Texas racism then, just as it is now. Don't kid me. I know about the Texas voter ID law and how the feds are trying to keep Texas from going back to those ugly days. Anyway, Reconstruction didn't last very long in the South and even less in Texas, where it was pretty well over in 1872. That made it hot for Albert because he had been traveling around Texas speaking in favor of emancipation and in favor of justice for black people. So Albert and I did what a lot of smart people did. We went north, there. Well, Albert went right on working with the printing unions while I worked on the needle trades. We gained a lot more understanding of how the world works and what it would take to change it. Eventually, we got involved with the International Working People's Association. We started agitating for shorter working hours and specifically for the eight-hour day. You ever heard that song? Our song? It went, eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, and eight hours for what we will. That was a great song. That was a great time. I hadn't thought about it before, Lucy Parsons. But you're really nice and quite pleasant. I may add, you're quite pleasant to look at. Back off, you old goat. You're way too old for me. Wait a minute. But weren't you born in 1853? Aren't you 150 years old? <laughs> Not until next year. Oh, well. Oh, well, all of you are anarchists. You can't hold that against us. Anarchism didn't mean in those days what it means now. We were trade unionists. My husband was in the typo union and I organized in the needle trades. Albert ran for the office of alderman in Chicago. We weren't hippies, mister. We were organizers. <coughs> but getting back to the story. We started organizing for an international strike day to be held May 1st, 1886. We got the idea from the Australians. It caught on right away. When May 1st finally came, there were strikes and protests all over the world, even some in Texas, but ours in Chicago was the biggest. We marched down Michigan Avenue 200,000 strong. What a day. The bosses just couldn't stand it. In fact, the bosses couldn't stand it so bad that they had the police shoot down some of our picketers over at the McCormick Works. You know where they make farm implements? They shot them dead for picketing, plain and simple. Well, we weren't going to take that. We decided to throw together a rally on May 4th and we picketed the Haymarket Square where they buy and sell hay. There, from the bed of a wagon, the speakers were to address the crowd. Yes, and that's when the riot occurred. Riot? Man, you really don't know much at all, do you? There wasn't any riot. It was a simple, peaceful assembly. Shoot, when Albert and I were there, the mayor of Chicago was in attendance. There was no riot. But Albert was arrested for rioting, wasn't he? What Albert was arrested for and what happened are entirely two different things. Albert was framed. When the shooting started, we weren't even there. Albert spoke early in the rally, and then we left. We were sitting in a restaurant when the cops did what they did. Well, if you weren't there, how do you know what happened? 
because I knew everybody that was there. And because I worked on our defense case every waking hour for the next year and a half. And then after the hangings, I spent my next 55 years fighting and struggling for the justice that was denied to my husband and the other Haymarket martyrs. That's how I know. Maybe you ought to explain that how it is you don't know. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened after we left. Like a lot of the rallies, the Haymarket rally went on too long. Most of the speakers and most of the crowd, including the mayor, had already left around dusk when the police, for whatever reason they may have had, decided to attack the people still there. They used their revolvers. A bomb went off, and when it was all over, 60 people were injured or dead. Several of them were cops. I can explain all that. I already told you that Albert wasn't guilty because he wasn't there. But that doesn't mean that anybody else from our side was guilty, even if they were there. But you just said police were killed. I'll start with the ones that got shot. They had new guns and a new kind of ammunition. And what do you think they found when they dug the bullets out of those dead cops? It was that same peculiar kind of ammunition that only the police had. They must have attacked from two different sides and actually shot each other. And as for the bomb, you can check with historians around Chicago right now. They'll tell you that the rally crowd was running back from the cops when the bomb came arcing in over their heads. By the time the bomb went off, the crowd had pulled back and the cops had rushed in. Nobody can tell me that the rally crowd threw that bomb. It came from the police side. Besides, just think about it. Do you think that the rally crowd came in that evening armed to the teeth and then just sat around until 1030, then attacked the cops? Why didn't they attack earlier when there was a bigger rally? Why didn't they shoot the mayor when he was there? If they were crazy enough to shoot the police, wouldn't they have been crazy enough to shoot the mayor? He'd have made an easy target. No, that's not what happened. What happened was that the police, probably under the direct orders of the bosses that were so angry over the May Day strike, attacked a small crowd of innocent people at a rally. When that backfired on them, the bosses got what they considered an even better idea. So that's when they decided to blame the leaders of the eight-hour movement? That's a fact, Jack. They rounded up all eight male leaders of the eight-hour movement, whether they had been there or not, and they sentenced seven of them to death after a kangaroo trial. They didn't even charge them with participating in the fight. They couldn't have because some of us weren't even there. They charged, they charged Albert and the others with inciting to riot and made that a capital offense. I spent the next 17 months leafletting everybody in Chicago and speaking all over everywhere, trying to get Albert and those eight guys off. There were only four. Only four got hanged, Doc. You got that part right. They gave one guy 15 years, then they commuted two death sentences, and they murdered Louis Ling in jail just as sure as I'm looking at you. They killed Louis Ling because he was a favorite because he was the best looking and because he was clearly the least afraid of them. See, a lot of people, just about all the working people were on our side. They knew the men in jail were innocent. When the cops put the men in a cell that could be viewed from the sidewalk, Ling would show off. He'd show off his muscles doing chin-ups on the bars and just generally put, generally put on a show for whoever would watch. And believe me, the ladies came to watch. Excuse me, Miss Parsons, but I believe you're wrong. History tells us that Lewis Ling... If Ling you believe that, you believe anything. Lewis had his head blown off by a blasting cap and a cigar. Do you think anybody as vain as Lewis Ling would have blown his face off like that? Do you think anybody who wrote the most militant of statements was so afraid to die? You better drop your official story, mister, and start thinking. Lewis Ling was murdered in jail. All right, all right. Let's look at the statement from jail. Here's part of it. Quote, the universal misery, the ravages of the capitalistic hyena, have brought us together in our agitation, not as persons, but as workers in the same cause. Such is the conspiracy of which you have convicted me. Lewis Ling's statement ends, quote, I despise you. I despise your order, your laws, your force propping authority. Hang me for it. Now, does that sound somebody who was afraid? I guess not. 
You got what the other said? Yes, George Ingalls uh, was one of the martyrs, and he said, Can anyone feel any respect for a government that accords rights only to the privileged classes and none to the workers? For such a government as this, I can feel no respect, and I will combat them despite their power, despite their police, despite their spies. He was talking about the 1% and the 99%. Adolf Fisher is another one of the men hanged uh, for the uh, fighting for the eight-hour day, and his last words were, quote, this is the happiest moment of my life. And my Albert shouted his last words, let the voice of the people be heard. August Spies made the most famous of all the final words. The time will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you strangle today. Yeah, they put that on his graveyard. Uh, the time will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices you strangle today. And then they hanged them. That was the boss's justice. Well, Lucy Parsons, what did you do while, all, while your husband and the other martyrs were being hanged? It was the worst day of my life. I gathered up Lulu and Albert Jr. and spent all morning trying to get in to see Albert. The cops kept giving me the runaround, even when I begged them. Even when I offered to stay outside and just let our children see their father. Then they arrested me. They stripped off my clothes and they threw me into a jail cell. That's where I was when they murdered my husband. But you made it through, didn't you? You carried on the struggle for almost 60 more years. They were hard years, too. I helped with the industrial workers of the world, the Socialist Party and the Communist Party. I was arrested over and over again just for speaking out. I lived a hard life, but I never let anybody within range of my voice forget about Albert and the others. Now here's a question for you, Lucy Parsons. Why is it, after the great tragedy you suffered through and all the hard years endured, why is it that you can come in here to Radio KNON today smiling and happy? How could you be smiling and happy? Don't you get it, Doc? I'm smiling because we're winning. We've been winning ever since the first time one worker said to another one, let's get together. We've been winning all along. Won the eight hour day. Albert and the others eventually had their names cleared by the governor of Illinois. We've won women's rights, minority rights, the right to vote, the end of Jim Crow, unemployment compensation, cost of living raises, weekends, you name it, Doc, and we won it. And we're going to go on winning, too. I look out there at all these people, and I know that they're with us. We will go on, side by side, just as we always have. We may stumble. But we never fall. We may get things temporarily wrong, but we always right ourselves. We will continue to fight. We will continue to go on together, and we will be victorious. Hooray for us. I played the, this is Gene Lance, I played the part of the professor, and Linda Jones was our Lucy Parsons. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linda. How did you like You're being welcome. Lucy Parsons? Oh, my God, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed her fire. <laughs> Lucy Parsons was a great person in American history. There's no yes. question about that. Thank and you of course, she was, she was a Texan. Yeah, well, she thank you for the opportunity came for from letting right, me be here. <laughs> yeah, she came from right here in this area. And uh, not a lot of people know about her because, uh, because the bosses want to keep that quiet. I don't know if you read uh, the paper this week that Belo has sold all of its radio stations, uh, all of its television stations, to uh, Gannett, which Gannett's one of the great, great big, one of the five big media chains that controls almost everything in the United States. All the more reason to listen to KNON That's right. because, <laughs> because uh, we don't belong to anybody. <laughs> we belong to you. The best we can. That's, That's right. right. We do. That's right. Yes, we do. We do well, you know, Lucy was here. She helped me out with this. I Lucy could tell. was here. Oh, yes. I could tell. Oh, yes. Definitely. She well, her said, spirit no, lingers on, do it. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she lived Thank until you. 1943. Wow. That. And uh, this all happened in 1886 and 1887 when she was a young woman. Yeah. But she spent the rest of her life uh, proselytizing, preaching, street corners and everything, in and out of jail. Mm. Mm. Is it time for us to take a break? I can't quite hear the music. Okay, we'll take a break and be right back. Right. Joe got the axe this morning. 
He's been down, sized down. The Dallas Summer Food Program is returning this summer. The DISD Food and Child Nutrition Services, the Texas Department of Agriculture, and other sponsors are working together to offer the Summer Food Service Program from June 17th to August 2nd for Dallas children. Meals and snacks will be provided to children's ages 1 through 18 at specific sites throughout Dallas. To find out more info, the phone number is 211, or their website is squaremeals.org. Or their text keyword is food TX at 877-877. When they're gone, they're gone for good. This is Scott from KNON's Texas Blues Radio telling you don't miss out on some great blues. KNON's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 Blues CD. It's a CD put together by real blues fans for real blues fans like you. Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 features great local blues from Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band. J.J. and the Detonators, the Chris Watson Band, the Two Tones, Rough Cut Blues Band, Jeff Stone with Charlie Love, Dave Millsap, Sirloin and the Ass Kicking Machine, Tutu Jones, Blues Boy Bo, Buddy Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Collie, and Johnny Red and the Roosters. Get a copy now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records. This is a Dallas Blues Collector's Item. A very limited amount of vinyl copies can be found at Forever Young Records, the sponsor of this great blues project. CD downloads are available at cdbaby.com. Whether you get it as a download, on vinyl, or on CD, all the proceeds will benefit KNON. For more info on Texas Blues Radio Volume 5, visit knon.org. Blue Monday. How I hate Blue Monday. Yeah, we love it. Got to work, like sleep Antoine, Fats Domino, Blue Monday, great song. Yes. The governor, Goof, Goof Perry, <laughs> like that. also yeah. has vetoed the Lily Ledbetter uh, Equal Pay uh, Act yeah, for women. We'll have none of that here. I figured you'd be coming in in a rage, Bonnie, over you know, that. It, it, folks, this is par for the course. Uh, we knew, we know what Governor Fancy Hair is. Uh, I like Goof Perry. That's very good. Mm-hmm. I like that. And what is what's uh, uh, our buddy that does the piece in between Jim Hightower? Mm-hmm. He put the goober in gubernatorial. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's very good. It, it's it's very frustrating. I mean, he's got now he's got these anti-abortion bills uh, that he's pushing that he wants to to have. Uh, passed to make it even harder for women to have a choice in Texas. Uh, again, it's again and again and again, it is the attack on our civil rights and on women's rights. And it's a male, white, male patriarchy Every, running the government I'm of Texas. You. Yeah, you, well, you, we trying saw trying to it. take us back in history. Exactly. You saw it uh, 10 days ago when we were at the, uh, at the redistricting hearing. What were the majority of the people on that th- that House committee? Old white men. That's true. A couple of Latinos. There, was, there were some of, exceptions. Yeah, a couple of Latinos. And the audience, females. nearly all women and minorities. That's right. That uh, that was in the fight for redistricting. I was really proud of you, Bonnie, and the others who showed up and sat through hours and hours of those redistricting hearings. I hated that. You did the that. best you could, and guess what? Yeah. The uh, Senate went ahead last night and approved... The, the old interim? bills. No. The one, the one that they said they were going to do to begin with, uh, they were kind of forced into having hearings. Uh, the hearings were really good. There was really good turnout yeah. among women and minorities. All over the country. Or all the over the state. And then, in spite of the people of Texas, they did it anyway. They uh, they endorsed the old maps that we had in the last elections. So those are the interim ma- maps. They were called interim maps, yeah, but yeah, they're trying to make them the permanent map. Interim means temporary. Yeah. Call me crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and I guarantee you, there will be lawsuits filed against this. It's it's going to happen. Everything is going badly. Uh, so many, so many evil things. We're gonna to have to check with Jim Schutz on this. Jim Schutz comes on next hour. Actually, Jim's not gonna be here today. Oh, um, is somebody filling in? Yes, myself and Dave Taffet from. Okay, Lambert we'll try to get him to talk about Clyde Warren Park. 
Yeah. Because Clyde Warren Park, like a lot of those things that happen down, especially in the Fine Arts District, mm -hmm. a lot of those things they say, well, this is not costing the people of Dallas anything. We got this by philanthropy. You know, some rich person is paying for this, and so you don't have to worry about it. Then they passed a resolute, they passed whatever it, whatever it took to tax people that live around at Clyde Warren Park. And boy, and, were they happy. Yeah. So, so the, what, they, were, they were told, first of all, this is a gift yes. from rich people, and that's why they're naming it, and that's why they're getting it put the way they don't want it done and everything, yeah. because the rich people are giving this to you ordinary people. And then you find out, no. Not really. It's going to be tax money. <laughs> we were it's joking. your tax money, <laughs> just like always. So, uh, and, and then, of course, the governor has added abortion to the, uh, uh, to the agenda for the special session. Of course. Anti women. Because that's so important. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, of course, <laughs> that, they're, that they're doing something else. But what they're really trying to do is take away the rights of women. That's it. And uh, that's there, it. there can't be any way of getting around it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, Linda Jones, we got you here to talk about Lucy Parson, but let's talk a little bit about Linda Jones. Where are you from? Where'd you come from? Originally from Akron, Ohio. That's where I was born, but I've been hopscotching over the years. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you came here from? I came here from Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, Detroit, Michigan's in the, in the news, too, because they're so broke that they can't pay their creditors. Yeah, Two and a half billion dollars, and they're, gonna, they're trying to pay 10 cents on the dollar. I know. So the banks are all lining up and mad at them because they want, uh, they want all of their blood money. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. Detroit's saying they, they, can't, they can't pay it. I know. I'm sort of waiting to see what happens with that. That's kind of a dramatic situation. How long have you been in the Dallas area? I've been here since 94. I mm -hmm. came here in 1994. What do you think of it? Does it start to grow on you? <laughs> well, it has. It's been a while. <laughs> well, you know Whether what? I, I want it to or not, yes, it has. It's, uh, I'm it's, from Oklahoma, and we hate Dallas. <laughs> we'll try to hold well, it. We'll Oklahoma. really try to keep liking you. See, I didn't know that. Oklahomans all hate you, Dallas. I, I know. They hate Texas. <laughs> yeah. And, it's uh, terrible. And they're not going to let them, Oklahoma's not going to let the Dallas have any of their water either, or Fort Worth. Well, can not going to let them have their water. You know, that's it. And then, after I left Oklahoma, I lived in Houston, and, and you talk about hating Dallas. <laughs> so when I finally came here, it, it took me some time to warm oh, yeah. up to this place, but yeah. I'm, I'm now a Dallas I've lived in a lot of D cities, Detroit, D.C., and Dallas, and Dallas has been the most challenging for me. Well, no but kidding. I'm still here. Dallas has a, has a very, very ugly anti worker history. Yeah. Always has had, uh, particularly since the Dallas Morning News came here. Oh, and now it's going to be, and now they're buying, you know, Gannett's buying them, so. No, they're not buying the Morning News. No, no, they're buying the, the television they're stations. They're buying all the television yeah, stations. That's they're, great. They'll get the Morning News, too, if they want it. Well, of course. It. Mm -hmm. Of course. But anyway, Dallas has a very, very bad history. But that doesn't, that's not the fault of the people that live in Dallas. No. Uh, Dallas uh, is full of working people, just like every yeah. place else. Uh, they may have a special challenge because they do live in Dallas. Mm -hmm. but that's no reason to hate them. Uh, in fact, it's the more the, all the more reason to join in with them and the fights that they've done. And actually, if people knew a little bit more about the history of Dallas, they'd know there's been some some things to be very proud of. Absolutely, thanks to in shows the history like of yours. Dallas. Thanks to shows like yours. You yes. may not know this, mm -hmm. Linda, uh, because you came later. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that the, it was the Dallas NAACP that won virtually all the victories in court that uh, were won here in Texas. Getting rid of the mm -hmm. poll taxes, for example, integrating the schools. Mm -hmm. All that uh, uh, came, was, was organized in Dallas. There may have been, the court cases may have been in El Paso mm -hmm. and in Austin, but uh, that the legal work was being done right here in Dallas. And Thurgood Marshall himself came to Dallas and uh, mm -hmm. helped with the uh, NAACP fights generated yeah. from Dallas. Yeah, so. I wasn't aware of that, but I did learn. I did learn, and I was quite impressed. What I wonder about is Dallas's role in the civil rights movement at the time. It was at its height. I always wondered why there what didn't seem to be much activity at the time when it was Or anything else. Dallas. There have never been a big mass movement in mm -hmm. Dallas, not since the 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is because the Citizens Alliance was begun in 1935, and they have always been able to mm -hmm. uh, either buy out or or incarcerate people that were trying to build a big a big people's movement here oh, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately some of the people they bought out were ministers who uh, could have 
welcomed Dr. Martin Luther King right. and brought the civil rights movement here and made it as big as anything else. But instead, they came out publicly against him and asked him not to come to Dallas. Right. So there are things like that to be ashamed of, but that's not uh, the people of Dallas. That's the money that runs things in Dallas. Right. And if you want to hate somebody, hate them. Oh yeah, I got to know the people of Dallas. Uh, you noticed it was probably you noticed the no comment when you mentioned the Dallas Morning News. I used to work there. Uh -huh. I was a feature writer, and I wrote a lot about the community uh -huh. there. So I got to know the people and how hard they work and how interesting they are. Are you yes. still writing? I'm definitely still writing. That's how I make my living. I'm a freelance writer now. Uh -huh. so Where I, can we find your work? Oh, you can find my work by calling me. <laughs> no, actually, I freelanced. I've done freelancing for AOL News. Mm -hmm. um, I now do a lot of coaching of other people. I have a workshop coming up. I do a lot of creative writing workshops. Finding Your Inner Scribe is my series. And I have a workshop coming up on Saturday. Finding Your Inner Scribe. Right. And this one is a memoir workshop at Lucky mm -hmm. Dog Books, if I can mention that. Lucky but Dog Books over on Davis or, or on the Davis. other one? On Davis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about the about the 700 block of Davis? It is. The, I think it is now. Oh, well, you have me at a disadvantage. I'm talking I about think. West Davis now. Yes. Uh, on, the other, on the west side of Beckley. Yes. So it's be right near, right before block. you approach the, the Official district, the mm -hmm. uh, arts Bishop district, arts district. Bishop district. Arts district. <laughs> yes, the official my district. Yes, my, the quote unquote what they call, but it's in right. that area. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful place. And what yes. time? It's at um, eleven o'clock until four. So if people want to mm -hmm. sign up for this workshop, what do they call you or something? They can call me. Should okay, you want to give your number? Two one four eight zero three three nine two zero. So you're helping mm -hmm. young writers or aspiring writers? Any kind of writer. And you don't have to be a writer. This is a memoir. You just have to be willing to tell your story. Saturday, a week from today? Yes, this coming Saturday. At what time? Um, 11 to 4. I from had to hesitate to four because I have a couple. 11 to 4 at Lucky Dog Books. At Lucky Dog and you want to Books. give your number again in case people are interested? 214-803-3920. Well, that's great. I didn't realize that you were teaching young writers, but that's something we really oh, need, isn't it? Uh, writers as young as you. What do you mean young writers? Uh -huh. <laughs> Any kind of writer, actually. Has, has writing changed because of the Internet? Yes. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Uh, the Internet is really good, but you have a lot of carelessness out there. People, everyone wants to be that person who disseminates information, but oftentimes they don't check their facts uh, and it causes a lot of problems. So there's a lot of us old school journalists who have those ethics still in place. The new media is great, but you still need to have those ethics and so forth. So right, there's mm -hmm. not as there's creativity. There's a lot of creativity out there, but there's a lot of recklessness out there now, too. Mm -hmm. I freelance. Of course, I never get paid for it. But <laughs> but uh, I turn in articles that are like maybe three paragraphs long, mm -hmm. uh, all headlines, all breakers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and usually with a, with a graphic. And then I get back, the editor's writing me back, well, why don't you flesh this out, you know, mm -hmm. and write this on out? Mm -hmm. and, and I just tell them, no. You're going to put right. it on the internet, and uh, <laughs> and people don't read magazine style articles right. on the internet. You know, they read something that pops off the page right. at them. So, and I have that ongoing argument with with editors uh, mm -hmm. who try to get me to write longer, mm -hmm. and I just won't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, well, it depends, and that's right. People have short attention spans, mm -hmm. so we need to write shorter and more concise. And also, people see, need to stop using all capital letters when they oh, write. Oh my God. <laughs> That's that like shouting that's at boring, somebody. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and it's hard to read. Yes, it's very yeah. hard yes. to read. It is. You need to change. Read. You need to change uh, the size of the print, though, from time to time for for uh, for it, what you're trying to call attention to. Right. You don't need all that emotion and, and everything. You can use or you bold, lose. and you can itali You can use right. bold, and you can use italics. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know italics. You don't use italics anymore in uh, in uh, the AP style book. There is no italics. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. The AP style book, which is the pretty much sure, the, the, the Bible, Bible. for mm -hmm. journalists, there's no italics. And the reason is because so much stuff goes through the internet that you lose the uh, you lose the, uh, the font. Mm -hmm. 
The, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. When you do the yeah. printing right, you lose. I wasn't yeah. trying to say font. I was it's, trying to uh, say the the. Are you sure we don't? The coding, mm -hmm. the coding that makes it changes it into. So there is no italics wow. anymore. And that's one reason why people use capital letters, because you don't have coding to get capital letters, and uh, so it's changing. It's it's radical, and uh, found out just the other day that telephone is going to be the only way to communicate. I mean, it's going to be the, the main way for people like us to communicate is... What do you mean, telephone? Mm -hmm. Smartphones? Text. Okay. Like text. cell phone. Text. When you say telephone, I'm thinking of rotary. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, still, I'm still trying to get on we the bandwagon with, with email. I'm starting to get to the point where I can use email effectively. And, uh, you do that well. Other people, say, other people say, well, you know, what about email? That's, that's, that's so last year. Right. Uh, yeah. Now it's Facebook and social media. Yeah. Right. Uh, you got a great Facebook good. page. I do have a you Facebook do. page, yeah, and it's, I do. I saw and it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's something I work on, but it's nothing like what it needs to be. But you keep And up, you I keep need to learn phone, mobile. Yeah. yeah. There, there are ways to do mobile uh, mass work yep. with mobile. In other words, yes, you can, you can. if you can reach, say, 300 people by email, and if you can reach, say, 3,000 mm -hmm. by Facebook, you can reach 3 million right. by mobile phone, or mm -hmm. so they tell me. Yeah, all of that is yeah. great. All well, of the I media is great. It's just learning it, learning the best practices and so forth. But and I hate uh, the fact that I hate for the media to dictate how things are are said. I hate for it to change maybe. the way we communicate, the way it, the, the 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 way it's doing. You mean the new media? Mm -hmm. um, it's creating maybe. people, as you said, Linda, the, with no attention span. No, we've had. They've been around. Oh, for I was going to say no. That's, <laughs> no, no. Don't. I think those yeah, people have people been. Are, yeah, yeah. I think there there's just a certain sect of folks they're, that are just they're they're right. constantly right. their brain is going and they don't have the ability. There to are focus. people who still long for that good story, Ooh, yeah. for that narrative, and and the long story too. Yes. But but our thinking is so fragmented now. Uh, the cartoon in Bizarro, I read Bizarro every day. I think it's a great cartoon. It shows uh, the bride, and you know, there's a wedding cake with a little bride and groom on top of it. Mm -hmm. And then it zooms in on the what the bride and groom are doing. They're both looking at their phones. The bride and groom, while they're getting married and the, and the rights are being read to them, they're, they're doing Twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> on their phones. Updating well, their Twitter account. Facebook has also redefined the meaning of friend. Yeah, it has. Ooh, yeah, it? yeah. Friends. Yeah, I have a lot more, yes. a lot more Facebook friends. friends than I really have. Oh right. yeah, me too. I've, there's so. lots more people. Though there, and you know, friend is such a. It should be an acquaintance, right. or, you know. But you know, or we either have to for our real friends. We need to call them something else. Yeah, uh -huh. BFFs <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's why they, ally. You know? Maybe that's why they invented BFF. <laughs> best friends best, forever. Best friends forever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe we need to have best friends before Facebook. Or well, there's no doubt that communications like that. is yeah. changing. <laughs> and it's a good thing, though, that, that people do have access to personal uh, and communications of one kind or another because the big media is taking over, mm -hmm. uh, taking mm -hmm. over television almost mm -hmm. completely, mm -hmm. taking over most of radio. It's already got all the newspapers, all the movies, all the books, all the publishing companies, all the textbooks. Uh, oh. Somebody wants to lie now. Uh, uh, if they've got enough money, they can pretty much get their their version of of, of, of history, history mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and current events. Uh, speaking of big lies, uh, did you notice that the United States is getting ready to get more involved in the war? Yep, mm -hmm. Syria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have recent intelligence. They, they when they announced this, they said recent intelligence. Uh, shows us that we need to get more involved in this war. Haven't we been talking about Assad using chemical weapons on his people for like a while now? Like yeah. Going well, on a couple kind of, of years? They've maybe? been hinting at it for a long time, but they say recent intelligence showed them that he had done it. Was that the people in the hospital dying from chemical exposure? I that don't know finally what it was. recently clicked that? <laughs> I'm not sure, but recent intelligence is what got us into the Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah. The recent intelligence about uh, mass weapons of mass destruction has got us into Iraq. Thank you, George And recent Stephanie. intelligence is now getting us into involvement in Syria. We'll be right back. Tell you all a story that's close to me. Worker who's leaning on a bended knee. Soil and tattered in such a... 
Hi, this is Shrustek inviting you to my R&B guitar party on Father's Day this Sunday, June the 16th at Port Davis Pub. Starting Jar Stansdale, Cookie McKee, Jimmy Preacher Ellis, Sam Whitaker, and Chester Burns featuring Jewel for a Sunday evening of rhythm and blues guitar, including a free chicken dinner courtesy of Henderson Chicken, Wyatt Lads. So get there early to eat. Tickets are available now at knon.org, Bill Records, and Forever Young. Poor Davis is located at 1313 South Lamar in Dallas on the south side. Make this a Father's Day to remember with George Stansdale, Cookie McGee, Jimmy Preacher Ellis, Sam Whitaker, Chester Burns, featuring Jewel, and me, Shostak, at my R&B guitar party. This Sunday, June the 16th, at Poor Davis. This is a Kano in benefit. Saturday, June 15th, Recycle Revolution's second annual Earth Day After Party with live music from local bands including All Lit Up, Beer Gnomes, Dallas Drum, D-Jam, and more, along with artists, a ping-pong tournament, recycling and waste-themed movies, an aquaponics display, interactive vendors, local crafts, tours of the Recycle Revolution facility, children's upcycling workshops, local beer, and food. It's an all-day, all-night event starting at 12 noon. Recycle Revolution is located at 1703 Chestnut Street in Dallas. For more information, RecycleRevolutionDallas.com. KNON is having a crawfish boil, and you're invited to join Jimbro of Monday Evening's Cajun Zydeco Party for a Sunday evening of mud bugs and Zydeco music from the real deal JB and the Zydeco Posse. Mangles, Noodle House, Sushi, and Crawfish of Farmer's Branch will be boiling up the bucks. We're talking live, jumbo, purged, fresh crawfish served spicy or in their radioactive sauce with corn and potatoes. We guarantee once you try them, you'll crave them. Advanced tickets are on sale now at KNON.org for only $5, and we will be selling crawfish for $6 per pound with all proceeds benefiting KNON. So save the date for Sunday, June 23rd at Poor David's Pub located at 1313 South Lamar in Dallas. Doors are at 5 p.m. and Jimbro will be in the mix with Cajun and Zydeco music till JB hits the stage. So come on down to the KNON Crawfish Boil featuring the music of JB and the Zydeco Posse with delicious live crawfish courtesy of Mango's Noodle House Sushi and Crawfish on Sunday, June 23rd at Poor David's Pub. This is a KNON Benefit Event. Morning at 4.45 We're back on the Rucker Street. We haven't been giving out the number enough, Bonnie. 972-647-1893 we got Linda Jones here with us, too. During the break, we were talking about this being the anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Right. And, of course, the city of Dallas doesn't want us to use the word assassination. So I'm thinking we should start thinking up some good things uh, to use instead of the word assassination, killed or murdered. Why don't we say, for example, about President John F. Kennedy had an unfortunate incident <laughs> here in Dallas. Is that like being food insecure? <laughs> yeah, he had he he had a, a breach of secure a breach of insecurity. Okay. On uh, in Dallas. You know, if you're went. hungry, you're food insecure. Uh huh. See, so I guess if you're Murdered, your that would be that would living be a breach challenge. of security. Living be, challenged. He, I like that. His, he living living challenged. challenged. That's good. Yeah. In the in the city of Dallas, yeah. or we can think of some other way to smooth this over. But mm. the truth is, Dallas took a heck of a smash in the publicity because it wasn't because John F. Kennedy was killed here. No. It was because of all the nasty things that they had allowed to happen, that the Prior big bosses to, of yeah. Dallas had allowed to happen before that. And the full page ad in the Dallas Morning News, again, uh, calling, uh, like uh, calling out the riots against uh, John F. Kennedy. Okay, Someone's Linda, online? Linda has a, a, new, a new one. Involuntarily unplugged. Um, Involuntarily <laughs> unplugged. That's good. Yeah, that, we can say that. That would be good. Yeah. Just so we don't say assassination. Okay. 
We got a special request during the break, Linda, and this applies to you. They want to know more about your writing workshop, oh, when okay. it's going to be, where it's going to okay. be. Okay. Okay. I, sure. I should have cautioned you about this earlier that if if there's a price on this thing, uh, you can't say so. Uh, but people can sure. you can give out your phone number so that people can call you and get more information. Okay, should I describe the workshop? Yeah, what you're going to do and okay. when it is and all that. Okay, it's called What I Want You to Know, Introduction to Memoir. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to know how to be a writer, all levels. And I help you explore your past so you can record it uh, for publication or personal use. So that's what it's all about. Uh, mm -hmm. You when can also where? email me. It's at Lucky Dog Books on Davis. Mm -hmm. About 800 address. block of West Davis. About the 800 block, 600, 800 block of Davis. And it's from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Next Saturday. Next Saturday, on the 22nd, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, you're more than welcome to attend. We have a lot of fun. It's not, don't think academic. Uh, and this is to assist you in giving you a jump start on writing your life stories for personal use or publication. So okay. I. Uh, you want to give out that. your phone number? 214-803-3920 or the email address is mainlock at yahoo.com M-A-N-E-L-O-C-K at yahoo. Mainlock, like a horse's main lock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. It's a play on words for another project. Okay, mine. and we also had a request that people, well, we tell people more about the July 4th event to stand up for people's right to privacy in America. It, it really goes more than I don't. I don't like that people's right to privacy. It makes no. it sound like it's just a, a little thing. No, uh, it's the a truth huge is, thing. the government's spying on us like crazy. I have been for mm. a million years, but now it's it's. They've very, gotten better at it. Yes, they're very good at it. They're using the very latest technology. They don't have to subpoena stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. They just get it. They get everything they want, yeah. and not only that. According to today's paper, they're sharing it with certain corporations. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. So the corporate uh, government tie is very, very, very evident apparent. in this. The action will be on July the fourth, and it's at Clyde Warren Park in downtown Dallas. It's that little park that they built over the top of Woodall Rogers, the one that they said was a gift, and that they're now <laughs> charging taxes for. Uh, it's, on it. it's on Clyde. It's on. What what cross street would you say? Field? It's it's like no, about Field and Woodall Rogers. Yeah, you'll have to actually you come further uh, east, uh, Olive, dead ends okay, into Olive. it. Uh, Olive and Woodall Rogers. Yeah, then. Pearl Pearl is probably the the east end of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can't miss it if you this get up on the service road of Woodall Rogers. You can't miss it. It's at nine <laughs> o'clock on July the fourth. And you may, you may, you know, traditionally we do stuff at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. but uh, doing something at 9 o'clock on July the 4th is a purely act of mercy because it's going to be hot, hot at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so if you start at 9 o'clock, uh, maybe it won't be so miserable uh, out there in Clyde Warren Park. But, but they want you to come and they want you to stand up for America's rights against the government. This all started under Bush, but it's gone right mm -hmm. on under President Obama. So. Under the guise of 9-11. Yeah. We, you know, I have a button that says, it's okay. I wasn't using those civil rights anyway. <laughs> 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 Which is, of course, you know, that's that's not true. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like we've just given carte blanche. Just whatever you want to do. Well, Linda's kind of an expert on information, or at least on giving it out. <laughs> no, what do you think about the way the government's taking over our information sources? Well, I was just going to make a comment by saying that's why social media is so important, I think, because it uh, helps us, uh, gives us, empowers us to yes. make the government more accountable uh, for misdeeds mm -hmm. or misguided um, actions. If you have an opinion or a question, 972-647-1893. The station really does encourage you to call. Bonnie and I often forget to, to give out the phone number. We're supposed to give it out all the time. You know what? Today skip. today is Election Day in Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope folks are, are, are listening, and you'll get, get out there and vote. Today is the runoff uh, for District uh, 5 and District 14. Okay, District Five is uh, District Five is Pleasant Grove, 
brand new district. That's where you live. Yes, that's where I live. This is a brand new district created for Pleasant Grove. Okay, so we have our own council person. Now, this this election could really be decided by a very few votes because there's not a lot of you getting out there to vote, <laughs> quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, District 14 is uh, the district that Angela Hunt was over for many years. She termed out. Uh, there's two people running in that race, uh, Mr. Kingston and Mr. Abtabi. Abtahi? Yeah, I know who Labor endorsed. They endorsed Abtahi. Yes. And and uh, I know the Dallas Morning News endorsed Kingston. But yes. who did uh, whom did Angela Hunt endorse? Do you Kingston. have any idea? Kingston. She endorsed Kingston. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and the Dallas Morning News originally endorsed Jesse Diaz for. And that's in uh, District Five. Yes, in District Five. But that endorsement was rescinded last week. Yeah, they took it back. Yeah. Now the uh, AFLCO endorsed Jesse Diaz. Mm-hmm. So we know who endorsed. We can't make a we can't make a no, recommendation. No, we can't make a recommendation. How Rick you're Callahan. Vote. Rick Callahan is one candidate. Jesse Diaz is another. Uh, get out and vote. Come on. Uh, it ta- it, believe me, you're not going to have to wait in line. The headline says that the uh, big decisions will be made by very few people. Much less they expect on low few turnout. voters. That's uh, right. I don't think we should give up like that. I think people should, should consider every election is really important and try to get out and get, a, get to them and, and get something done. The state of Arizona, which is supposed to be worse than Texas, they expanded <laughs> Medicaid. <laughs> And, they did? Uh, yeah, and the governor, uh, Goof, Goof Perry, man, made sure that uh, Texas would not expand Medicaid. He puts uh, Goober in gubernatorial, does he not? Yes, he does. Uh, but anyway, Arizona <laughs> did it, and that's and they're supposed to be worse than Texas. See, that's really scary that we're st- – are we worse than Arizona, or Arizona's worse than us? Beats me. We don't have Joe Arpaio. That's that's a, a plus, mm-hmm. but yeah, we do have Rick Perry, but they have Jan Brewer. Yeah, God, you know, it's really a big toss-up. Yeah, it's really a big. Oh, they I have John McCain. <laughs> Wait a minute, yeah, <laughs> we Ma- win. We have Ted Cruz. <laughs> well, McCain wants uh, to to basically uh, put in a war. no-fly zone over Syria right now. By God, we're going to war if it's up to John McCain. Yeah, he wants to put the no-fly <laughs> zone on them, and uh, that's. Great just a, idea, a great escalation. Remember that word escalation from the Vietnam days when they just kept escalating and escalating, and really it turned out that what they were talking about was dead Americans. Yep. Thousands of them. That's what they escalated. Yep. I want to put in another plug for July the 2nd. We're going to be uh, pushing against uh, the government plans. And this is not just the Republicans. This is also the Democrats, that, or some of them, who would like to cut into Social Security. They call it the change to CPI. We call it a big cut, a big, ugly cut. And uh, any kind of cut for old people is very, very serious. Right. 48% of old people are either already in poverty or just one paycheck away from poverty. And, uh, poverty, and you guys make so much poverty money. Poverty for a single oh. person is $15,000 a year. So, in so, other words, they're just barely making it. So, how much? Uh, just, just out of curiosity, what's the average? Does anybody know what the average Social Security payment is? Yeah, it's about that. It's about uh, fourteen hundred a month. A month, yeah. A month, yeah. For, and that fourteen hundred dollars so a month. So it's poverty. It's poverty yeah. for, for a single person. And if you have uh, dependents, you know, you're trying to raise your grandchildren, like so many old so people many, are now, yeah. uh, you good. can't make it. Here's mm-hmm. another statistic on that. This is about future retirees, which are, apparently there are not going to be very many of them because they're trying to take this away, trying mm-hmm. to take away mm-hmm. the right to retire. Less than half of the households who are aged from 55 to 64 have any retirement savings. Yeah. Less than half of them have any retirement savings. Yeah. And the ones that have retirement savings have less than uh, – half of them have less than 120 grand. So that's going to last them about four years or so, five years maybe. And, uh, and they're taking away pensions. They've already taken mm-hmm. away pensions. Replacing them a lot of times with 401Ks. Yeah, but that, those but don't really work, and it's no, just not a good thing. You need both. 
Yeah. You need both. Well, you need savings, pensions, and yes. Social Security. But you and have to all be able, of those are under attack. And you have to be able to make enough money to actually save something. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, if you make an, if you work at Walmart, on average, you're paid eight dollars and eighty one cents an hour. You don't work forty hours a week. Yeah. You don't have health insurance. You're probably getting some type of public assistance, whether it be WIC or food stamps or uh, Section Eight uh, voucher for your rent. Why do we have to support the Walmart workers when they own 40% of the wealth in this country? Yeah, the, the family What's wrong does. with this? Mm-hmm. Why do we have to keep, keep giving them our money? Yeah. How mm-hmm. come my taxes have to pay for them to go to the doctor? Or, uh, But yet, if I have to go to the doctor and I don't have insurance, I, I, I guess I just don't get to go. Linda, is Walmart getting a fair treatment in the writing world that you come from? <laughs> the it, writing world. Yeah, in the in the world of journalism and printing and all that. Or is are the workers getting a fair treatment, or is it just the company is getting? Because I know the company's buying all kinds of advertising. Ugh. They have all these campaigns to try to make themselves look good. And I was just wondering if you had any assessment about uh, treatment that the workers are getting. I know we hold we hold an awful lot of action we don't get any coverage for. Well, I, I don't know what you mean by the writing world, but I empathize with the workers in that I know Walmart workers. And you know them personally? To, I, yes, certainly. And how are they doing? Well, some have, I'll, I'll tell you some, what some have expressed, having to make the decision as to whether or not they will go to the doctor or buy food. Having uh, to decide? To pay, yeah, pay medical bills or buy food. Uh, because, because they can't do both. Because they can't do both, right. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that on more than one occasion. That is so tragic. So uh, as far as uh, their advertising and what they're doing in that sense, I, I, can't, I couldn't speak on that. Mm-hmm. That's, once again, why I'm glad that people, the community, have more of a say in what is going on. Mm-hmm. Over the social media network, we don't have to wait to see whether the, a newspaper will write our story. Mm-hmm. and tell our stories and so forth. There needs to be those checks and balances, but you have the actual people out there who are able to to share what is going on without certain filters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, those of us that want to do something about Walmart can meet on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, that'll be Juneteenth, by the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to meet at the Taco Cabana in the Cockrell Hill uh, exit of Highway 30. There's a big sh- shopping mall there. Taco Cabana's got a big sign that sticks up. You can see it from Highway 30. And uh, that's called the Landry Freeway, by the way. Uh, another rich guy. <laughs> and uh, the Cockrell Hill exit uh, has uh, has a big Walmart and, a car- and it has a Taco Cabana. So we're meeting there at 7 o'clock Wednesday. We're going to do what we can for the Walmart workers. And then we're going to celebrate Juneteenth. Has uh, coming from Detroit, Linda. You probably didn't celebrate Juneteenth in Detroit, did you? When I was in Detroit, we were wondering what that was all about. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. It's y- a Texas holiday. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I but know. But it's it's I know. It's, uh, it's getting celebrated in other places now. Well, there are. are well, my opinion. I wondered why we were celebrating. <laughs> that we got the message late. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought about it. when I first moved to Texas. Because it's better than you know, not getting it yeah, at all. Yes. And, 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 and I, well. I'm sure that's our time, but I uh, I wrote about that basically trying to get points of view from people, and it was a regional kind of thing. Oh, okay. that there are many of us who are from the Midwest and North, and what we didn't get it, right. but um, there are those here who had mm-hmm. different points of view about. We used that. to have a gigantic uh, celebration down at Comanche Crossing, and uh, and and what happened was that the three uh, boys who just graduated high school were were killed in the lake there while in police custody they were drowned and uh, from then on it's uh, the Comanche Crossing celebration has not been as as uh, flamboyant as it was Hmm. uh, unfortunately Mm -hmm. so we don't really have a statewide uh, celebration Mm -hmm. uh, at least it's not as much as we used to right and uh, because they announced it at Comanche Crossing there was a big celebration there in 1865 uh, may I, may I say this? It's not totally off topic, but 
before the show ends, I want to commend you guys for what you're doing because you, I, I've just started listening uh, to your program. Fortunately, I was turned on to it by a friend. And you are the voice for so many people who are voiceless. And, you're so, and, and you're so strident. And Thank you. I'm encouraging all of my friends to listen. Yes! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Can, can we get any money for her? <laughs> <laughs> right. They we don't didn't get paid. Ask me to we do don't this. get paid. And so. I'm very serious. We'll take up a collection. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Linda Jones. Thank you. That's so terrific. Any last words, Linda Jones, because we're fixing to sign off? No, thank you very much for having me on. Bonnie? Thank you for being here. And stay tuned. Uh, myself and Mr. Taffet, or Taffet from uh, Lambda Weekly will be hosting. Get off my lawn. <laughs> we'll see you uh, Wednesday night over at Walmart on Juneteenth. And have a good Juneteenth. And Workers of Beat will be, at, be back next week. Thank you. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth. The voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.